Hi, my name is Gideon. I'm also known as Gideon Slight. Welcome to my studio and I'm your creative play fit coach. So join me now. Hi and welcome. This is episode 8. It is week 8 of my Creative Heart Prompts and I'm excited to share something new with you guys. Recently we have explored the elements of design and we saw how that can enhance our art not only in our studios but also in our lives. That's exciting. So if you want to learn more about that do feel free to join my Facebook group, The Creative Heart, where I do share these wonderful life moments. But this week, my prompt and inspiration for you to focus on is to try something new. Try a new medium or try a new tool. And we went ahead and we experienced and explored the jelly print plate. Now, I know this sounds complicated, but it's not at all. So a uh, jelly print plate is really an amazing tool that can take monoprinting in your art to a whole new level. You can create interesting collage elements, beautiful papers that you can use both on your canvas and in your art journal. And that is what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So I'm not going to waste any more time because there's a lot to discuss so join me as I turn the camera down on my table and I show you how I use my mono prints on my jelly plate in my art journal. Let's go! Right, so for this session, I've got my jelly plate here. I've got my meat tray to just dispense some paint. I've got acrylic paint here. I'm going to be playing with metallic gold. I've got a beautiful cream. Or, um, yeah, let's just stick with uh, or it's sometimes called unbleached titanium, that's what I was looking for. And I've got some Payne's Gray, I'm gonna keep the palette really simple today. I've got a brush for applying some paint, I've got my brayer, I've got some paper over here, just some recycled paper that I can just roll my brayer off to keep that clean. I've got some paper towels, some baby wipes, and I've got a selection of paper. So I've got some tissue paper that I have pre-cut into some um, pages that I can print on. I've got some newsprint here if I need it, and I've got some cardstock over here as well. So I'm just keeping my papers always handy and ready so that I can once I get into my flow I can continue to create uh, until I am satisfied now this morning on my um, live on Facebook I created some prints of my Reiki symbols and I have applied them directly to my canvas. I just want to show you a little bit. There's some areas that you might be able to see. I know the palette is very monochromatic in that sense, so it doesn't stand out a lot, but I did want to show you what an amazing effect you can create directly on your canvas if you use your gel plate as a way to transfer um, marks that you've made onto your canvas so that's just an application so I'm going to be playing first and foremost um, with my gel plate and in a way it's um, sort 
sort of warming up the plates and getting into the printing mode that we have and then once I've created some papers I'm going to come back to my art journal today and I'm going to use that uh, prints that I'm going to be making as collage elements in my diary so I'm going to be putting this aside and then what I'm going to do like I said in my life this morning one of the things that you can always keep in mind to uh, be more successful in your jelly printing is to think in terms of contrast so if you're going to do a light background on your papers then um, you need to print something dark on top of that or if you're going to have a dark background you need to print with something light on top in order to see clearly the difference between the two so i'm going to be preparing some of these papers with a background first and foremost and then i'll be getting into my printing so that is number one inspiration so if you're feeling bored and you're feeling dull and you're feeling oh there's nothing new i don't know what to do you need some inspiration finding it through using a new tool or in uh, a medium can really spark inspiration right number two fun having fun is one of the biggest reasons hopefully why you do go to your studio and play and create is to have fun right it started when we were young, when we were toddlers and your parents handed you your first piece of crayon and you expressed yourself with glee on a piece of paper. That is fun and I want you to go back to that aspect of yourself where you can experiment, you can play and you can experience how satisfying it is to express yourself in a new medium and with a new tool so it really feeds the inner artist within to have some play sessions in your studio where your main focus is not so much on producing anything in particular but just having fun just experimenting and seeing what would happen if you tried something else right so the third reason why I encourage artists to try new mediums or tools is to break out of that old style state of just creating what you are used to creating because you know how to create it. Um, break free from habits, break free from methods that keeps you locked into a particular style or size or shape or medium that you've become quite familiar with and listen it's always fun to go back to those things that you're familiar with but you know when you've got inspiration and you've had fun with a new tool it can always be something that you can add as a tool to your toolkit to create beautiful art okay number four is all the new possibilities that open up to you trying a new tool or a medium is like a doorway it opens a, a whole new world of possibilities and this quantum reality that we have this infinite field of possibilities that exists and we are access to every day this is one way to access that is to try something new I think as human beings and being left brain orientated and schooled, I think one of the advantages uh, maybe that we have of having a left brain orientated society is we figure out the most effective, efficient um, way to do things, the shortest route. Um, doing things without thinking so you would do it a few times and then it sort of almost becomes an automatic habit like your route that you drive to work every day as an example um, and you know we've discussed this before how we can fall into habits that's not always helpful so yes it's a great thing to you know drive a safe short efficient route to work as an example but when we apply that to our art, it becomes predictable, it becomes boring. And that is exactly where I try to stir things up. So in trying uh, a new medium or a tool, 
it's like a doorway it opens you up to an infinite field of possibility and that is very exciting to me and then number five and this is not the only reasons that exist but this is the top five reasons that i could think of um, for trying a new tool or a medium so my number five reason would be to expand your skills as an artist so uh, there is so many uh, mediums and forms of art out there um, and one of the ways that you can become a better artist is to try something new maybe you entered into the world of artistry through sketching and drawing and you've become quite good at that or maybe you are not interested in drawing or sketching at all and you just love throwing paint at the canvas and i'm one of those <laughs> So I can definitely say that in trying something new, it expanded my skills because I think I really started off as a watercolor artist and, and really got into that medium. But I found that it was limiting me as a creative coach in the way that I could help clients to um, sort of experience this whole creativity world. And watercolor is a phenomenal medium. Um, it's quite temperamental. So it's something that you need to spend a little bit of time to get to know. But, you know, I got trained in acrylic painting as a creative coach. And I just understood the power of this medium um, because of all its infinite possibilities and techniques that exist. So I really enjoyed it. But now that I've got acrylics and I've got watercolor, I tried some oil pastels, I've tried jelly plate printing, mono printing, um, I've tried so many different things and it's always fun to try something new. So this is my challenge for you this week. Try something new. So I'm going to show you what a jelly plate is. Now, I know that not all of you have got jelly plates, but I would encourage you to go to your local art supply store or check online where you usually order your art supplies and look into investing into a jelly plate. Now this is just an A4 size jelly plate. This is just the box that it came in. I just wanted to show you. Um, it says gel printing plate. It's for use in mixed media art and craft projects. And this little tool changed my life. So my jelly plate is a little bit old. I've used it um, over the last two years. So it's not white and see-through anymore. I'm just going to peel this piece of tissue paper off that I put on it. Because I want to just show you my jelly plate. Now... It's orange, mine is orange, because it got stained with um, an orange pigment that I used. But the jelly plate is literally made from some kind of silicone or rubber kind of material. I think it's silicone, it feels like gel, literally. And this plate will change your art world because this opens up a whole field of possibility. Now, unfortunately, gel plates um, is a little bit expensive. It's not cheap, but it's also not unaffordable. I think this A4 size gel plate, I don't want to lie to you, but I think it was roughly in the, in the area of about 500 rand, round about there in South Africa. They come in various sizes. You have like literal card size, um, gel plates and you have bigger ones which I'm saving for like a, a 3 size or a, a 4 size so there's various sizes out there and there's various makes out there so do do your homework a little bit before you just buy the first one that you see because you might get a better deal I know that there are some places on Amazon and um, maybe online that you can order more than one size in a packet and you have a variety for a better price 
So do check out your world and see what is available to you if you want to try this out. If you're not sure if you're going to like it, maybe just start with uh, this size or one size smaller and get into that first and see how that works for you. And then you can always upscale from there. But I don't think it will be a waste of an investment at all. Right. So what do I need to use the gel plate? Well, you need the gel plate. But one of the things that might make your life a little bit easier is a brayer. Now, a brayer is literally a roller that you apply the paint with to your gel plate. And that helps you to sort of spread out the paint as a thin layer because we're getting into printing and printmaking and that is of course a whole speciality field in the world of art but i'm going to be accessing a very small part of it through the gel plate and show you how you can play with it in your art journal on your canvas and also as a tool to begin to create a variety of textures and patterns. You can create your own collage material and papers that I've recently, um, over the last two years, um, really started to experiment with and play with and see what is available and what is possible. Um, really, it is a very big field. Okay. So, you will need your acrylic paints, you'll need some brushes, you'll need maybe some uh, baby wipes or wet wipes and uh, you might also use some baby oil or mineral oil to condition your plate. But that's a whole other story. So, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, so I think one of the biggest things that you need once you've got your tools is your imagination. And there is such a rich field of uh, artists out there that does videos on YouTube that demonstrate how to use the gel plates and you will see that each artist has their own technique, has their own style, has their own approach and has their sort of uh, favorite medium that they like to work with. And really, once you start to experiment on the gel plate, you'll be amazed at the field of possibilities that exist. What is the biggest tip that I can give you guys if you want to get into your gel plate and playing with it? Well, the biggest tips that I can give you is to use contrast in your designs. And that simply means if you want to see really good prints that you create on your pages, be very aware of using contrasting colors like have a dark background and then print with something light on top or have a light background and print with something dark on top. You will see what I mean when we get into it, into my creative art journal this afternoon. All right. And then um, another tip that I can give you guys when you get into gel print printing is to try and have a limited palette because if you have all of the colors of the rainbow next to you, it can become quite overwhelming as to your color choices and which ones will work best. But you know what? I think experimentation and play is our best teachers. Try it. If you think it's going to look cool, if it inspires you, then go ahead and do it. Because if it doesn't work, first and foremost, you've learned something. If you add that to your skill set and second of all you can always add another layer you can always change it you can always add something to it so it's not the end of the world okay then I want to quickly talk about paper and I will show you guys this afternoon in um, my YouTube video as well but one of the things that I use a lot uh, to play with is just ordinary tissue paper that you get from the gift store or the party store or whatever these tissue papers that we tend to put in you know uh, the little bags that we put our gifts that we give to someone tissue paper is phenomenal because it's strong uh, strong enough but it's also a little bit translucent I mean you can see my hand through it right 
And that becomes exciting when you use this print that you do on here as a collage element because the paper is so thin, you can add a lot more layers to your canvas than if you used thick cardstock as an example. So another paper that I like to play with that I just quickly want to share with you guys is just, sorry, I just want to put something on my papers otherwise the air conditioner blows them all away. It's just ordinary newsprint uh, that you can also get from your local art supply store. It's really a cheap paper. It literally is newspaper paper that's also quite a uh, a fun paper to work with because it's quite absorbent and then of course last but not least I mean you can literally use printing paper from the printer but if you do want to use a little bit of a thicker paper especially if you want to right, do now that I've created myself a few backgrounds um, that I've played with mainly on my tissue paper I can begin to enhance then with my Reiki symbols that I want to use as my pattern over this background. So I've got a nice Payne's grey one. So I'll definitely use something light on top of that. This is quite a nice ombre from light to dark. Here's a nice gold one that I can do something with. And here is a lovely gray one with some acrylic skins now you will notice this is one of the things of jelly plate printing that you will find both frustrating and rewarding is that your plate has to warm up and you have to really get into a printing session so when you do play with your jelly plates and be aware that it's not just going to be one print and you're going to carry on with your life Sometimes the plate needs to warm up. It depends on the season. It depends on the temperature of the day or how your paint will adhere to the plate and lift. Sometimes you have a bit of a boo-boo like I had before. Unfortunately, I stopped the video, but just to show you, one of my previous attempts was not so successful. When I pulled it off the plate, it tore because the paper was still too damp so I do find one of the things that I've learned about jelly plate printing is if you do a light printing like we did with these backgrounds um, and you don't press too deeply into the plate and you pull the paper off before it gets too wet then you can have a beautiful soft background um, and you can start to warm up your plate. But then we get to what we like to call a clean print. It's to really pull everything that is on your plate off. It helps to dry that first layer like you saw and then to add a fresh layer of paint on top of that and to use maybe a stronger paper like I did here with the cardstock. And then I will uh, really press down firmly and I'll even use my hairdryer on the back just to make sure that the paper has become completely dry so that when you pull it off the plate that your paper don't tear and you are able to lift everything that is on your plate including the the skins that sometimes form that you leave behind now i personally love that as a texture for my prints but if you don't like that um, you want really clean prints then you know it's just something that comes with practice and with knowing how your paper must feel before you peel it off right so now that we've got a few backgrounds I think I'm going to use this one as a nice background in the diary so I'm not going to do anything to this um, page yet um, I'm going to continue to play with these backgrounds that we created previously and because it's so the tissue paper is so thin and the layer of paint that is on there is also quite thin you will find that it dries quite fast so that you are able to continue with your work now i'm going to start with this paint's gray one that i created first and in order to have a nice contrast i'm going to be using my creamy color 
to do another layer here and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the paint on my plate. So I'm first going to roll this in and then I'm going to do some texture printing with my um, incense holder and then I'll also scrape into the paint. So this is quite a thick yummy layer of paint maybe way too much so you can see i'm brayering off here on the side and i have created some very interesting and beautiful artworks with this paper so never throw this away because this can be an interesting background so when you find you've got just a little bit too much paint on your plate just pull some of it off with your brayer until you get to a nice stage, even cover, not too thick, not too thin, just enough so that you can see some contrast. So I'm just using this as a stamp in a way. And I've got this beautiful design on the bottom. That would otherwise go to waste, really. <laughs> no one ever really sees this part of my incense holder. Let me just use my tissue paper and just wipe this off while it's still wet. Now, if you use something special like this, you can always use um, just a bit of rubbing alcohol or whatever to clean it afterwards and like in my case I'm using that as my incense burner that's no problem right now the next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to use the back of my um, my brush here and just imprint my I'm going to try imprint my Reiki symbols on here before it dries. So I'm going to be playing with my goddess spiral because the paint is drying on me. Oh, let's see, this one is still yummy. I suppose that could have been done a little bit better but it's all about play and experimentation now let's put our paper on there sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and I've not placed my paper in the center now I think if I want a clean pool here I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer just to strengthen the tissue paper and again fingers crossed that we have a nice clean pool so let's try. Okay so I dried this tissue paper with my hair dryer I'm going to sit down and hold my breath. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see what happens. It might be a total disaster. <laughs> it might be a total success. Let's see what our tissue paper will do. I also find not to pull the paper too fast, but to have a consistent tension on your paper while holding your printing plate down because it's a jelly plate it feels like silicone um, it can have a very sticky feeling but that's also what releases the paint so it's something to get used to yay I quite like what's left behind I'm gonna allow that to dry so we didn't get a very clear print on Reiki symbols, but this is definitely a beautiful print and I love the texture, the old world feeling that it gave me. So I'm definitely not going to throw it away because we can always 
add another layer uh, and you'll find it as a metaphor of new doorways and possibilities um, to take your artist's journey on an adventure out there and to discover new ways of creating and of um, having abundance in your life, having an abundance of fun and self-expression and possibilities in your life. This is what a new tool offers you as an artist. Uh, but if you look at it as the artist of your life, having a new tool, having a new friend, having a new experience, having, um, you know, just trying something new, walking through a door that you've never entered into before, opens it up, opens your life up to experience this field of possibility that always exists. So again, it's another way of saying, if you're stuck in a loop, if you are bored, if you feel um, like your life is mundane or boring or mediocre, maybe then it's time to try something new. So change your route, discover that new door and go through it and see what's on the other side and really open up your mind to be playful like a child. Curiosity is an excellent attitude in order to enrich your life, the art that is your life. So I hopefully, I hope that today has inspired you to look at your life and your art and to see how a new tool could offer you possibility to experience a deeper level, something new that is inspiring and fun and could change the way that you approach your art and could change the way that you live your life. I hope that is communicated and that you will try that. So I want to leave you with a question today in this beautiful episode and that could be where in your life are you feeling stuck or are you feeling bored or are you maybe entrapped in a comfort zone? where everything is okay, it's like being in lukewarm water, it's not cold, it's not hot, it's not exciting, but it's also not entirely boring, it's just mediocre. And how could this theme or prompt of this week to try something new be an inspiration to uplift and inspire the art of your life?
And here we have it. I've played with the papers that I've printed on my jelly plate today. And this gave rise to a whole new experience of this symbol that I wanted to use as a pattern and just as a gentle reminder in my diary to do my Reiki principles every day and just to apply this beautiful um, method and way of living in my life but also I can enjoy it in my art and have it inspire me so I hope that this uh, class today has inspired you to try something new and that you will maybe try to invest in a jelly plate and or some form of printing mono printing there's various ways you can do this and play with it in your art journal here i've just used some little stock cards out of my stock to um, enhance this whole image but just look at the rich tapestry of color and texture and movement that this mono printing on the jelly plate provided me to bring to my art journal and uh, in a way you create something so unique almost unduplicatable in a way because of all of these elements that had to come together to create the texture and the color and the movement on your plate so be inspired and try something new this week and i will see you again for another episode next week thanks for watching and bye bye for now